Today we're making these chunky trestle saw horses. Now, whether you're new to woodworking and are just setting up your shop or already have a permanent workbench, I'm gonna show you why these are an essential tool in your shop. And I'm even making plans available down in the description to make them along with me. And to have some fun in this one, I'm giving you a puzzle to solve. If you can spot my tiny espresso cup throughout the video, you'll be led to a link where you can download the plans for free. Let's get going. What are sawhorses, and why are they called that? Was the original sawhorse an actual horse that served that purpose? Is it because seeing those beautiful four-legged things makes the little kid in all of us want to stop woodworking and do this? Get up, in this video, we aren't actually going to attempt to answer any of those questions, but you have to admit, there's a bit of mystery there. But there are questions we will answer here, like why build your own saw horses? And why build big solid ones like these? I'm gonna give you what I think are four great reasons every woodworker should have a pair of these in their shop throughout this video. But first, let's talk a little about the design of the saw horses we're gonna build. Each one of these is gonna consist of a beam across the top held up by two vertical legs running perpendicularly into wide feet braced with a lower cross support. Each of these joints will be held together with mortise and tenon joinery and then reinforced through the tenons with dowel pegs. We're gonna cut out a small section on each foot so that the saw horses have four points of contact. This will help prevent them from rocking when placed on an uneven surface. I'm gonna start the build by roughly breaking down these giant two by 12s into the rough parts I'll need to make the part blanks. If you're able to get a hold of kiln dried four x four beams to make these, you'll be able to skip this step. Unfortunately for me, the only four x fours I could find were pressure treated. So I'll be making this Southern yellow pine work for mine. While I do that, let's address the elephant in the room. You already have a decent workbench or assembly table. So why would you need saw horses? Isn't that kind of a step backward? If you don't have a work table already, then you should definitely stick around because these saw horses are a much cheaper and faster way to get started woodworking than investing in a fully functional work table. I like to think of saw horses as a cheap, flexible, extra, and mobile workbench. So the first one I'll mention is that saw horses are relatively cheap. You can make these in a day for a fraction of the price of a full-size workbench or assembly table. I'm using construction lumber from my big box store to make these. I'm milling my material square, but you don't even need these to be perfect to make them functional. So if you're just getting started, you could build these to save more of your budget to invest in tools and still have a surface to work off of other than the floor. While I finish milling things up here, I wanna say thanks for watching so far. If you're enjoying this video and find this sort of thing valuable, it would mean a lot if you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos this year and would love for you to join me for all the cool stuff I've got planned. Now that I've got a giant pile of basically two by fours from the 90s, when such things were actually made of nice clear pine, I can quickly glue them up and do a final milling pass. While those are drying in the clamps, I can enjoy the cathartic experience of hammering out some dowels with my little dowel cutter. I'll give myself a moment here to work out my feelings on those dowels while we talk about the second reason you need these saw horses. They're a flexible work surface. What I mean is because it's basically just two sets of legs, you can make your work surface as short or long as you need. This is useful when working on projects that really push the limits of your normal work table, like when I made this 12 foot long conference table. If you make them the same height as your work table, you can just pop one up to add another couple of feet of support.
With my rough parts glued up and milled square, I'm ready to start laying out all the joinery. I'm planning to cut these mortises all the way through using a router from both sides. So I'll make my marks all the way around each end and draw the same location on both sides. This will ensure quick and easy router setups. The lines I'm drawing here for the mortises are not the outlines of the mortise, but rather the center lines for where I'll line up my half inch router bit. By offsetting these the same distance from both sides, I'll be able to make the mortise from one side, then flip the piece over and make the second pass on the opposite side without changing my jig setup. You'll see that in action later on. I've intentionally cut the legs, which will have tenons on both ends, about a half inch longer than their final length. I'll also cut the tenon on each end a quarter inch longer than needed so that we'll have a bit to trim off after assembly and ensure the joinery is flush with the top. Cutting these mortises can absolutely be done by hand with a mallet and chisels. And if you're new to woodworking as a hobby, it's probably great practice. But I'm gonna be using a plunge router and this jig I made recently. This jig is great for cutting mortises like these, especially when you only need a mortise as wide as your router bit. But it's even better when you need to make mortises wider than your router bit like I'm doing here. As I mentioned before, I can cut wider mortises like these using just one router setup by flipping around the workpiece. Actually drilling the mortise is easy. Using a spiral upcut bit is the way to go to make these. What I recommend doing is plunging to the full depth your bit can go at each end, then moving over along the length of the mortise in subsequent plunges to drill out the waste. After that, work your way down in side to side motion to smooth out the rest. I think this is better than making progressively deeper passes along the length because in my experience, no router bit actually likes clearing away material from three sides of the bit, no matter how shallow the depth of cut is. Then I only have to cut out the corners with a chisel. This is definitely the most tedious process in this whole build, but I'll say this type of hand tool work is really satisfying and honestly really didn't take that long. I probably cleaned up these 12 mortises in about an hour. Before we move on to cutting the tenons on these, let's talk about the third reason you need sawhorses. They're an extra workbench that you can pull out as needed. I've had so many scenarios in my shop where both my workbenches are occupied with either tools or other work pieces in process and really needed another surface to work off of. In cases like that, it would have simplified things a lot to be able to pop up a couple sawhorses and keep working. Tenons can be a bit intimidating to get right, but there's no need to feel that way if you have a decent saw with a miter gauge or sled, or even a miter saw with a trenching feature. And you're definitely gonna want your PPE for this. I'm gonna be using the crappy miter gauge that came with my table saw and this dado stack. But I will say, you don't need a dado stack to cut these, it'll just take like a billion more cuts. Since we already laid everything out earlier, it's just a matter of setting up the blade height and going for it. I personally like to make the first cut right at the back of the tenon to get the precision part out of the way. To help set the depth of these repeatedly, I recommend clamping a block to your fence and then moving the fence the right distance from the saw. If you have these Jessam table saw stock guides, you can set these up to serve a similar purpose. With this first cut done, just move the piece over and remove the remaining waste. Then just rotate 180 degrees and repeat for all the tenons. I will say, unless your dust collection is way better than mine, this is a really messy process. So there's no harm in cleaning up between cuts. Now I'm gonna do a dry assembly, make any necessary tweaks to get a good fit and lay on some final details like shaping the feet, putting these angles on the top, reinforcing these joints with dowels and adding some finish.
So the final reason you need sawhorses is that they're basically a mobile workbench. I often find myself just needing something to set pieces on while painting out in my driveway. These will be the perfect solution whenever I need to work outside of my shop. There are cool multifunctional table systems out there that serve similar purposes, but unless you're ready to spend $150, sawhorses are gonna be the better bet. I'm pumped to finally have a pair of these. They're so solid and no lie, I literally spent $60 on materials. The plans are available on my website or for free if you solve my tiny espresso cup puzzle. But I also offer all my plans for free to folks that are members over at Patreon, which I'd greatly appreciate it if that's a way you'd like to support the channel. If you wanna see more about the mortising jig I use to make these, check out these two videos and I'll see you in the next one.